call together the, uh, to order this April 4th, 2019 MAPC meeting, and we will start with public announcements. Before we begin the agenda, the Wichita Sedgwick County Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and the Wichita Sedgwick County Board of Zoning Appeals would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this public hearing. Copies of the agenda for today's meeting, the public hearing procedure, and planning department staff reports on all agenda items are available in the lobby of this conference room. The planning commissions and the BZA's bylaws limit the applicant on a zoning, subdivision, or variance application and his or her representative to a total of 10 minutes of speaking time at the start of the hearing on that item, plus up to two minutes at the conclusion of that hearing. All other persons wishing to speak on agenda items are limited to three minutes per person. However, if they feel that it is needed and justified, the chairman may extend these times by up to two minutes. All speakers are requested to state his or her name and address for the record when beginning to speak. When you are finished speaking, please write your name, address, and the case number on the sheet provided in the lobby. This will enable staff to notify you if there are any additional proceedings concerning that item. Please note that all written and visual materials you present to the Commission and the Board will be retained by the Secretary as part of the official record. If you are not speaking but you wish to be notified about future proceedings on a particular case, please sign in on that same sheet. The Planning Commission and the Board are interested in hearing the views of all persons who wish to express themselves on the agenda items. However, we ask that all speakers please be as concise as possible and avoid long repetitions of facts or opinions which have already been stated. For your information, the Wichita City Council has adopted a policy for all city zoning items. A copy of this policy is available in the lobby. The City Council relies on a written record of the Planning Commission hearings and does not conduct its own additional public hearings on these items. The decision of the BZA is final. Any appeal of a decision of the BZA is to District Court. Okay, with that, we will move on to uh, agenda item number one, approval of the prior MAPC meeting minutes from March 21st, 2019. We'll move. Second. Okay, I have a most, motion by Mr. Hartman, a second by Mr. Klossmeyer. Um, all, yes, I think we have Chuck, John McKay, and Joe Johnson abstaining. So Abstain. I'll, I'll, thank you, Joe. <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. And zero three. I was looking at Scott to tell me that. It was zero three. Thank you, Scott. Okay, moving on to yes. agenda item number two, subdivision committee recommendations. Two one is sub 2019-00004, final yes. plat for Emerald Bay Estates, fourth edition. Would anybody on the commission like to hear this case? Seeing none, would anybody in the audience like to hear this case? Not, I'd move for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Joe Johnson, Johnson and a second by Mr. Green. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries 14-0. I needed to count the people that were here today. We have everybody. That's fantastic. Okay. Uh, we have no vacation cases, so moving on to I agenda item number four. Case number CON 2019-00005 and CON 2019-00008. Would anybody on the commission like to hear this case? Mr. Foster, we will hear this case. Agenda item number five, case number CON 2019-00006, city conditional use to allow used vehicle sales on a property zoned LC. Does anybody on the commission like to hear this case? Oh, I'd like to hear this case as well. So we will hear this case. Moving on to agenda item number six, case number CUP 2018-00052, city CUP 
an amendment to Tallgrass East Commercial Community Unit Plan. Would anybody on the commission like to hear this case? We will hear this case. Agenda item number seven, ZON 2019-00007, city zone change from SF single family residential to TF3, two family. Would anybody on the commission like to hear this case? Seeing none, would anybody in the audience like to hear this case? We will hear this case. Agenda item number eight, case number DER 2019-00003, Northeast Heights Neighborhood Comprehensive Plan Amendment. Yeah, I think we. Yeah, we'll have we to hear that case. That one. All right. Yes, we are. All right, moving back to agenda item number four, and we have Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, members of the commission. Dave here out with the planning staff. This request concerns the property that's located at. Um, let me get my notes here. Roughly at 29th and Greenwich. Um, as you can see outlined in black is all the property that's included in, in this case, both the rezone or the zone case and the conditional use. The zone case is primarily to amend the protective overlay that applies to the property that was done several years ago. The conditional use is to, to address the uh, proposed use of the property. What the applicant is proposing is a um, outdoor driving range facility uh, complex. It's outlined in the staff report uh, with respect of uh, everything that they're, they're doing. Um, the staff report outlines a number of conditions and additional recommendations from staff. <clears throat> the biggest issues that they're talking about <clears throat> With the outdoor driving range, and I think there's a site plan that we can show. Um, maybe not. Uh, but anyway, what they're what they're proposing to do uh, is to uh, create a, a driving range into this area, north of the uh, uh, detention pond, and uh, fence that area. Uh, with uh, screening to hold the golf balls. One of the things that they're asking specifically is uh, they ask for in their application the ability to put poles up that would be 170 feet in height. Um, their issues would be concerns about structures of that height, setbacks off of 29th Street, and also the fact that that's much higher than anything that's allowed currently in, in the restrictions. <clears throat> also, this is within the um, airport overlay uh, area around Javera Airport. And as we have outlined in our recommendation, they did provide an FAA study that showed they had been approved for structures up to 150 feet height. And so the recommendations that we made uh, in the protective overlay were to modify it so a, a 30 foot side yard street street side yard would still apply, which would be along 29th Street. So the, the poles would need to be 35 feet back from the right of way of 29th Street and limited to 150 feet in height, which is all the FAA has approved as of this date. I think the agents are indicating they will be asking for other issues here. They also asked to have the uh, signage rights comply with the underlying zoning, which is LI, which is how the property is zoned. Uh, with the conditional use, um, there are uh, some repeat standards apl applicable primarily regarding the height. Um, there is also a requirement, because this will be a, a lighted driving range, that there be a lighting study provided to the K K um, MABCD as well as the planning staff and be approved before any lighting occurs to assure we do not have any lighting bleeding off the property and that the uh, hours of operation be limited uh, primarily to uh, 10 p.m. on uh, or 11 p.m. on uh, Friday and Saturdays um, with the driving or with the outdoor activity because among other things would be they intend to, to provide a, a multi-story structure that will have 
restaurant and make this an entertainment facility and I'll let the agent address that a little more. So this did go to the district advisory board. Um, no, it's not. Hold on. No, it will go to the district advisory board next week. Sorry. I'm confusing it with the other case. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Richardson. Dave, is the 170 feet limitation just for the poles itself? It would not allow a building that tall? Is that part of the Correct. protective overlay? The, the, the height of the structure is limited to 55 feet. It's only the poles that we're talking about will go that high. Thanks. Other questions from the bishop? Mr. Florence. It had mentioned that they would have outside entertainment as far as bands and things. Uh, do you know approximately where that will be and how it would affect the uh, according, complex? Of according to the, the site plan that they had, uh, we got late, um, and we may have to go see if we can get you guys a copy of it. But primarily it would be along uh, closer to the Greenwich side. They're going to have a parking lot here. The, the, the structure is kind of a not a full U shape, but a, a, an odd shaped structure that will sit in here. And that's the area that most of that activity is going to occur. It's not going to be on this east side, which is close to the apartment complex. This is a, a medical facility. And of course, we have commercial activity on the uh, this side of Greenwich. This is the, the new striker uh, soccer complex further to the west. Other questions from the commission? OK, thank you, Dave. Uh, agent or applicant, if you'd like to step forward, you'll have 10 minutes. And if you'll state your name and address, I'd appreciate it. Okay, I'm Kirk Miller. I'm the agent. My address is 117 East Lewis. Um, we'll start with the question about the outdoor entertainment. It will be on the west side of the, of the building, so you wouldn't even be able to see it from the apartments. <clears throat> David mentioned that we requested 170-foot poles. We're, you, they have a consultant hired to determine the heights of the poles, and they've determined that 170 would probably be the max and probably maybe not even need to be that tall. But we're requesting 170. They've submitted to the FAA to try to get 170 from them also. And this would have to go to the um, city council too. So we have to get approved to the, by the FAA before we'd go to city council for those heights. Also in the staff comments, it mentioned the signage. Um, it says no portable or flashing signs. We'd like to be able to do LED, and I don't know if that's just something that needs to be clarified by staff, but. OK. Yeah, the, the, uh, you could do LED signs, just not flashing LED signs. Right. OK, that's fine. We just want to make sure we didn't get eliminated from LED signage. Um, I know there was somebody that had a concern about go-kart track. We have a go-kart track shown on the site plan, um, and they were concerned about the noise. And if they were to actually do the go-karts, they would be electric go-karts. They wouldn't have all that noise. I know that was one of the concerns. And the other item that we'd like to address is we figured the hours of operation would be um, till about 11 in the evening. We would like to request that that we push that an hour further up to like 12 in case they have a party or something like that where they need to keep it open a little bit later. The anticipated hours generally be closed about 11, but they've done a little bit of research on some other similar facilities and sometimes they need to stay open until 12 for the activities that they do the out, for the outdoor activities and, and other operations. And otherwise, we are fine with the staff comments. Question from the commission. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Hartman. Could the, the hours of operation apply to weekdays too or just weekends? Um, we'd like to, to maybe do 11 on weekdays and 12 on weekends. <clears throat> Just an hour higher than what the staff report has. Mr. Warren. Kirk, the, assuming you get a, approval from the FAA, my only concern on, on the height is, is from a safety standpoint, who engineers what, what kind of pole and, and um, 
will it withstand most tornado tornado type winds, or what's what's the standard for this kind of a this kind of a pole? That's outside my area of expertise, but from what I understand, they're metal poles that have solid bases, and and they're all over the country right now. I, Top Golf uses them. It's I think it's pretty much the same consultant they use to design these. Okay. Other questions from the commission? Mr. Florence. My concern is that, that noise from the outside entertainment bleeding over there, because you have a band outside. It's, you can hear it for a long way. Is it any way or anything you can do to kind of uh, counter that? You're going to have a three-story building between you and, and that area, so I really don't know how to answer that. I, I don't know if you could counter that or not. Mr. Hartman. Uh, is there a decibel level that they have to stay under? Uh, there is. There's a, there's a noise ordinance, but it, they're not going to trigger that. It's pretty high. Um, you know, from a suggested standpoint, you could require any uh, outdoor music to only out, you know, west of the building. Other questions from the commission? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak on this case? All right, seeing none, I will bring it back to the commission for action. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I would uh, like to approve it at 170 feet if FAA approves that height, otherwise 150. I'd like to allow the extended period of time for, for uh, uh, entertainment venues on weekdays and Friday and Saturday. And what was the other request? The two things I noted was the electric go-karts and the outdoor music. Um, I think there's no problem with electric go-karts. And, uh, and the LED lighting is allowed as long as it's not flashing. So that'd be my motion. Second. OK. I know, I was, I was looking at Mr. McKay. So I have a motion by Joe Johnson, a second by Mr. Bill Johnson. And discussion. Mr. McKay, I know you have a comment. The only comment I've got, it, it says you say go-kart. You made, made it making your motion electric go-kart because that's what they said it was going to be. Yes. Electric go-kart. And Mr. just for clarification, the, the suggestion that the music location be west of the building is included. That's fine. That was my question. We're going to add that to the motion on music on the west side? Yes. Okay. Mr. Bill Johnson, are you okay with that? Yeah. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Foster. I'm curious, is there a setback requirement relative to the golf portion of this on that east side in terms of these 170-foot poles uh, and all that? Yeah, the setback requirement for the poles is uh, the, the poles can be 80 feet in height uh, at zero setback, and then uh, one foot of uh, increased setback for every two feet in increase of height. So, Thank you. Hey, any other discussion? M Mr. Green. I don't have anything against the motion, uh, but uh, I think in the future, if we could have uh, the staff report attachments actually included in the staff report, we didn't yes. get anything on this one at all. Other he than, says he's sorry back there. Yeah. I'll let it go this time. <laughs> Dave, he's going to let that Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion? No. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 14 0. All right. Agenda item number five, case number CON 2019 and it looks like we have Philip up here to present to us. Yes, good afternoon. Philip Ziebenbergen, uh, planning staff. Before you today is a conditional use to allow used vehicle sales on property located on South Broadway, uh, just north of Harry. It's actually at the corner of Broadway and Boston. 
As you can see here, the site is uh, almost half zoned as LC with a small sliver here in the middle with GC zoning. And the rest of the site is zoned B multifamily. This limited or this uh, conditional use would only apply to the area that is outlined primarily the uh, LC portion. The subject site currently is developed with a single story masonry building and it has a pawn shop. The pawn shop will continue to operate. The rest of the site, as you can see, so here's a pawn shop. The rest of the site is parking um, and it is owned by the pawn shop and retained parking. The applicant would occupy a small portion of the building as their office. And according to their site plan, you can see here that they would only display and sell vehicles up in this northeast portion, reserving all the rest of this for the existing parking for the pawn shop. Uh, under limited commercial, uh, used vehicle sales are permitted as a conditional use, and the applicant has stated that there will be no vehicle maintenance on this site. Um, looking around the property, this is looking from the center of the property out west. Um, the properties to the west are zoned uh, SF5, and they're single-family homes that are constructed. To the north, uh, you have Hamilton Middle School. Uh, this is looking at the site. Looking south, you can see the pawn shop that's in existence. And right here along the curb is where those display vehicles will be. Um, this is looking south-southeast, um, right across the street from the subject property. These are two. Uh, used vehicle sale lots right now. They have applicable conditional uses associated with them. And then looking northeast across the corner, you have a uh, tire repair shop uh, located there. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, area is located within the uh, central uh, established central area, um, which looks for uh, infill development. Uh, it is slated to have commercial uses, uh, but more importantly, this area is located within the South Central Neighborhood Plan that's been adopted in 2005. Uh, this plan labels this section as a commercial redevelopment node, and it's just north of what it considers a, uh, I apologize, a development or a neighborhood gateway. Uh, so you see here at the intersection of Broadway and Harry is where they have the neighborhood gateway. And this uh, pink rectangular area around there is what they're considering the commercial redevelopment node. Um, the intent of this node is for medium intensity commercial uses, such as destination uh, retail restaurant uses. Um, and it should be developed in a node rather than on strip commercial pattern. According to the South Central Plan, uh, the locational guidelines, it identifies things that are least desirable land uses as well as most desirable land uses. And it states that used car sale lots are specifically least desirable land uses for this area and they're strongly discouraged. Uh, along with this, as well as the fact that under its kerning zoning classification being limited to commercial, um, commercial uses can be permitted on the site without conditional uses. There's many things that could be done with this site for medium intensity commercial uses, as well as the fact that vehicle sales on the property could increase, uh, have negative impacts with increased traffic noise light and are generally considered visually unappealing. Uh, based on these, staff recommendation is to deny this case. The case was heard at the DAB last night and uh, they are with staff recommendation for denial. Uh, they voted on that unanimously with one abstention. Uh, should the commission want to approve this case, uh, we recommend approval based on the conditions that are listed in your staff report. Um, I'm not going to take the time to detail those out. Uh, and with that, I can stand for any questions. All right, questions from the commission. Mr. Blick. I just want to confirm this does not fall by the updated neighborhood plan. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. <clears throat> I just wanted to verify this does not, um, with the updated neighborhood plan, it doesn't fit for that plan. Correct. Okay. The South Central Neighborhood Plan strongly discourages used car lots. All right, thank you. Well, do you have any idea how many car lots are, are on Broadway? Uh, not Broadway? off the top of my head. I did read the memo from the DAB meeting last night, and there was an individual at the, me at the DAB meeting last night who stated from their perspective, I don't know the accuracy of this information, but they stated something along like 27 
along South Broadway. I don't know the extent of that area that they counted. Um, that's the only number that I know of off the top of my head. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Mr. Warren. Would, uh, I'm trying to figure out this, this list of least desirable, would a, would a pawn shop, where would a pawn shop fit in the desirability level? Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, I honestly did not review that in, in, ex, in extent related to pawn shops since this was related to used car lots. And this case is not whether or not this can be a pawn shop, the pawn shop is, is existing, it's whether or not a portion of this property can be used as a car lot. I'm just looking at is, is what's being proposed an upgrade? I'm just, that, that's a question. Other than the pawn shop is still gonna be there, even if they use a portion of the lot to be a car lot. Did you have an opinion on that? I was, I was just going to say the other least desirable land uses stated in that plan are uh, nightclubs and uh, motels. Other questions from the commission? Okay, agent or applicant, if you'd please step forward, state your name and address, and you'll have 10 minutes. You can use the arrows on here if oh, you want okay. to work through things. Uh, Good afternoon. My name is Steve Dunn. I'm the managing member of uh, Advantage Quality Cars. We're the agent. Um, and I appreciate the time to... Uh, I, had, I had a whole speech prepared, which maybe I'll just spare that. I mean, the, the, let, let me do one thing. A quick uh, history of Advantage Quality Cars. Did I say 1238 East Douglas, my address? For, oh, never mind. Okay, so... Just FYI, Advantage Quality Cars was founded by Renner Center back in the 90s. As you know, Renner Center uh, was sold in the late 90s, moved to Dallas. At that point, they, they got rid of the car business, the furniture business, everything but the rental business. And myself and four of the Wichita businessmen ended up buying what was left of Advantage Quality Cars, the, the Renner Center deal. We've operated it for now 20 years. We're located at 1238 East Douglas. Does this sound like an ad? I'm sorry. But, so we're, we're at East Douglas, and over the years we've had multiple satellite locations. And the, what we've concluded is a large one like we have on East Douglas, where we're going to have 150 cars, works pretty well because of the economies of scale. When we start putting out these satellite lots, we end up with a lot of staff, a lot of management issues. So I got the bright idea, knowing the owners of AOK down there on South Broadway, we could establish a toehold on a high car uh, throughway, Broadway. I mean, Broadway and Kellogg, let's face it, those are where people buy cars in this town for the most part, the vast majority. And I thought, well, what if we could co-locate with, uh, say, a pawn shop? Like I said, I know, the, I know the fellows who own and operate that. We could have some synergies of staff, security, and if any of you have been by our store, we typically have... Uh, you know, late model cars. In fact, our my my vision here is just 10 to 20 late model cars. Think a 2016 Nissan Sentra, Toyota Corolla, affordable, parked out in the north side of the parking lot, uh, in the in the area that that they suggested. And we could we could engage in that market without the expense and the overhead of going out and renting a lot. I don't think there'd be, and I know, I understand there's 26 plus car lots on South Broadway. This isn't so much a, another used car lot as a micro store, uh, kind of a shared use environment. And I think AOK has some others where they co-locate businesses. Again, they're sh we're sharing staff, we're sharing uh, technology, Wi-Fi, et cetera. Uh, we, would, we would improve the, or fix the lights. There's existing lighting out there, and for security purposes, we'd want that lighting to work. Um, I don't envision a fence because, quite frankly, if someone's going to steal their car, your car, I have learned the hard way they're going to steal your car. So as long as they're out there displayed nicely, because it doesn't do me any good to not display them nicely, displayed nicely, keys are secure inside the building, we should be good. Um, we're not going to do repairs. I have no interest in repairing down there. We're not. It, this isn't going to be a little shack with six or seven ratty cars sitting on blocks. We'll have. 10 to 20 nice vehicles. I, if I can sell 10 uh, vehicles a month off that with that overhead expenditure, it, it should work nicely. Again, it's a micro store. I, 
I don't, I don't, I, obviously I didn't invent it, I don't, it just came to me. And uh, that's just a very unique location being that it's on Broadway. I know the guys that own the store and the, it has actually the space to put 10 to 20 cars without influencing the parking for the car lot. And really with the kind of traffic we get, even at our big store, I mean, hey, we get 20 people a day drive on looking for cars. It's not like it's going to be, well, I would love for it to be a flood of people coming on, but I, I don't see more than, you know, 10 to 20 people coming in a day, if that, uh, on an already busy street. So I'm um, certainly, whatever questions, that's mine. Hey, questions from the commission. I have no questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody from the audience who would like to speak on this case? Okay. If you'll step forward, state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes. My name is Adam Barlow Thompson. I live at 1121 South Waco uh, in the neighborhood here. And I'm speaking against changing this and uh, putting another car lot in our, in our neighborhood. I have three reasons that I want to point out. Um, one has been mentioned that the 2005 neighborhood plan um, asked that this would be a least desirable business for the area. We are in the process of updating that neighborhood plan right now. And from the effort that we've had with city staff and consultant that's helping us with that, we've had more momentum around engaging residents in this area than we've ever had. And it's a really exciting moment. And that momentum uh, includes being able to target special areas in the, in the neighborhood that have some potential. There's not a ton of those, but this is one of them. The intersection of Broadway and Harry becomes a very important intersection as we look forward to what we want our neighborhood to be. Um, it already has some established and businesses that are desirable there, and this is not one of those that we want to include in that lot. In fact, in the new neighborhood plan that will be developed, um, we that the especially the residential part of that area uh, within that lot is something that we have paid attention to and are looking at. And so you have residents excited about this plan and engaged in it and are asking that you help us to keep that momentum going in the same direction. There's also, of course, many opportunities for car lots on that. Not only are the ones that are existing, there are spaces for lease and sell for sale that are you can see them from that, that location. So that if there is a desire for it, it can happen. But um, we uh, at, as part of the Neighborhood Association um, and the people working on the plan asked that you would not uh, permit this, this request. Thank you. Adam, can you stay there just a second? Any questions from the commission? Mr. Richardson. Adam, as you pointed out, there's a number of car lots already there, a couple across the street. Uh, but, you know, in some ways, a, a car lot's kind of a placeholder. And part of it is, you know, the ones across the street are fenced kind of looks like uh, they're protecting against something. Uh, the applicant has said he doesn't intend to fence it. Mm -hmm. Has the neighborhood explored ways to make this land use acceptable, certainly as a, I mean, frankly, the pawn shop could fill the lot with cars that are doing business there and you still have cars parked on the lot. Uh, you know, I would encourage you to encourage ways to, uh, for whatever, landscaping, I don't know, no fences, whatever it is, to make uh, what may well be just a placeholder land use. I mean, it's still vacant land. It's still available, frankly, for development to somehow integrate that in the plan because what we're faced with is either yes or no. Right. Uh, we don't have any other way to go, and I don't think maybe Scott can weigh in on this. Uh, maybe there's other things that we could do that haven't been proposed by the applicant, but because we get these requests not only in this neighborhood but others uh, yeah. in yeah. terms of ways to make this a compatible use, if you will. You know, it's a pretty benign use. You don't have loud music. You don't have people staying up to 1 o'clock in the morning. You, don't, you know, there's, there's a lot of right. things about it that, frankly, is... Uh, if you got to live next door to something, um, 
not very many people buy cars after six o'clock at night. You know what I mean? yeah. and, and so yeah. it's is is there a way? You know, we've kind of struggled with this, but to find a way, and I would encourage you to say, we could live with this if. And I, I don't know what that is. Uh, not been involved in those discussions, but it, you know, we keep having these. Yeah, if these I could re, offer requests. a response to that. Sure. Um, you know, we I've been to this meeting before and ask for a car lot to not be approved. And it was, and there were some extenuating circumstances that made, that made sense. Um, what I'm excited about right now in South Central neighborhood is that I get that it's a yes or no for you all, but before I was always asking you just to say no to something. And all we had was resistance to stuff we didn't like. What I'm saying is the neighborhood plan is doing the things you're asking right now. And so now I'm saying, I want you to say yes to the neighborhood plan, which in this moment ask you to vote no on this particular zoning issue, because the neighborhood plan is exciting and it does target that space to say, here's what we wish this space could be. Um, and we're going to do work to implement that. We're gaining citizen involvement so that we can put pressure on city council and y'all and people like you to and, and developers to come in and use that space. And it helps us when um, the space is a is a vacant lot like it, or a parking lot right now. It looks like an asset in waiting. When it is a, a, par, a used car lot, it looks like a hassle. To, for somebody to come in and, and flip that around. So that's, I do think that, that that request that you're making is one that we are working on with the neighborhood plan right now. Other questions from the commission? Okay, thanks Adam. You up? Oh, Mr. Florence. What time frame are we looking to have that plan done? So we will have it by end of July. It will be finished um, and then at the the within the city or within the neighborhood, we're going to be hosting um, kind of kickoff events that will be happening at the end of summer. Um, some, a lot of them will be uh, a part of the neighborhood night out as a way to gathering, gathering um, resident support around that plan. Any other questions for Adam? Thank you. You bet. Is there anybody else from the audience that would like to speak on this case? Okay, I will bring it back to the uh, agent for a two-minute rebuttal. Done? I, I would, again, I, I'd just like to reiterate, um, it's a new concept, micro store. I'm not sure in the plan that the gentleman was discussing, I mean, I, I understand it's private property and we've made an agreement with these folks subject to approval, of course, of the um, planning commission to be able to sell cars there. So I don't know how all that fits in with the neighborhood plan if we're talking about that specific lot, but I don't see this as a, a negative for the, for the area given the kind of cars we sell, the lighting we're going to have, and the, and the uh, lack of noise and signage and so forth. Thank you. Other questions from can you just, Mr. Warren? Mr. Dan. Yes. Sometimes we we get looking for compromise, trying to figure out something that that works for you and, and doesn't hurt the neighborhood. My mind's going. One of the one of the problems with used car lots is they get filled up with way too many cars and then the second thing is that the, the quality of the cars are such that it makes it look like a dump so my question would be is if if this were to be approved would you be willing to limit the number of cars that you would display on this lot to 12 cars and would you also be willing to limit the age of the cars to no more than 10 years of age uh I would prefer 20 because I don't know what number does work to, to drag people in. Uh, 10 years, I'm trying, probably the average age of the vehicles on our current lot are four or five years old. Um, again, I, I, I don't think 10 years would be an issue, no. And, and believe me, if any of you happen to drive by 1238 East Douglas to advantage quality cars, 
I think you'll see the kind of cars we sell. I have, I have no interest in selling really nice cars on 12380 East Douglas and junky cars on Broadway. That's not our business model. Our business model is to sell cars that when, we, when they go off the lot, we don't have to worry about them breaking down and causing the customer a problem. You can, and, you can understand the fear of the neighborhood. Oh, I, I, com I completely understand that. And if nothing else, I would say that from my perspective, this will be one of the – there's some nice ones down there. You know, I've been up and down Broadway, and there's some folks who – I don't want to disparage the other dealers down there. But for the most part, yeah, they, they can look pretty bad. And like I said, I've seen shacks with cars laying around. That's not our MO because our name, Advantage Quality Cars, is going to be there. And so it's got to be as good as it is on Douglas, or we're just running backwards. Joe Johnson. I'd like to ask our attorney, Mr. Van Zandt, is that permitted to have that kind of restriction? It is? And how would that be enforced? Not very well. well. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Richardson. About the issue of fencing, can could we agree you're not going to fence this lot in like some of these others? No, I, I have I have no interest in making my car lot look like a prison. And if and, and that's a little disturbing to me. You go up and you see all those, and I think it sends a bad message. Again, cars now, if they're going to steal it, they're going to steal it. And uh, I do see that there's something in the uh, regs about having something that uh, around the perimeters to keep the cars from going onto the sidewalk. Uh, as I was reading through that in the uh, zoning requirements, so if we're required to put up and I don't know what's there, either the short posts or something that keeps the car from, uh, we, we're doesn't, happy to do yeah, whatever. Doesn't encroach on the sidewalks. Yeah, I mean, but no, I, I have no interest in putting a big, if I have to put a big fence up, I'm out of there. I'll go back to the person who's at the dab meeting. There might be 26 or 27 car dealerships, but it's not between Broadway and here, I mean, Kellogg and here. It's further south, way south. A lot of <coughs> probably not over three or four. Twenty-seven. No cars. No. Kellogg. No way in the world. All the way down. No, all it way. wasn't all the way down. It's not. Okay, that, that's that's beside the point. Plus, also, you know, we can do a conditional use for three years, and have them renew it. That might fit in with the south neighborhood plan, so you don't have a piece of that's vacant ground there. sitting there. And say, all right, we'll give you a conditional use for three years. They got to come back. If South Central people have already come up with some kind of a program to use that ground, then it can be it, it's, it's over with. So because you're not building a building, it's just they're just using the utilizing the parking lot. Take that motion, Mr. Mr. Blick. Uh, well, I'm just filling up for discussion. I've got a, Mr. Let me get Mr. Blick first, because Mr. Dunn, I uh, drove by this facility, this parking lot today. And coming up from Broadway, MacArthur, all the way up um, Broadway, I counted five empty car lots yes. that are open for lease. Yes. Have you looked at any other properties that are up and down? Because I'd hate to see that this become a car lot, and then two or three years down the road, you decide uh, it didn't work out for me, and now there's somebody else is going to be there, and it's going to be another car lot. You know, have you looked at other properties along Broadway? Yeah, yes, we have. And again, the. The uniqueness of this space is we have an existing business, and I think AOK has done a great job of upgrading their buildings. They look nice. They're very presentable. They are willing to try this with us, kind of this micro store concept. You know, pawn shops in the past and various stores have tried to sell cars, and what they found out is they're really good at being a pawn shop, but they really are bad at selling cars. We're really good at selling cars. I don't want to have to open a multi-use Deal. So we can co-locate, and th so again, this is a very unique location in that there's an existing business, and it actually has the space where we can put 10 to 20 cars or 12, whatever the number is, and then share a lot of the infrastructure. So I don't have to staff it 12, 14 hours a day just for someone to say hi. I'll have a salesman there, maybe a business development person. I can't, if I go to any other place, I've got a whole new world of issues, which we've done in the past. I've got people to open it, to close it, to, it, it just takes on a whole new world and it's not worth the effort for a satellite store in our opinion. So again, this is kind of a micro store concept. 
and and all the stars lined up with AOK, the owners, the the physical space as far as having the space for the cars, and then it's on a high traffic uh, uh, thoroughfare where there are lots of used car shoppers. I have Mr. Daly. Oh, yeah, a uh, comment about your 10 year old. There's classic cars that are worth a heck of a lot more than a new car, and those need to be considered. Are you interested in perchance a classic car showing up? Is it? Uh, not really. Occasionally we have those. We stumble on them. We reserve those for our show. Well, we don't have another satellite lot. I, I truly, I mean, if, if a 10 year restriction was prerequisite, I could live with that because again, kind of the bread and butter of this program is going to be a two or three year old Toyota Corolla or Nissan Sentra, something that's inexpensive, reliable, gets great gas mileage because that's what our customers need. Okay, just so you're satisfied with yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, and I appreciate that. It's, you get more turnover with those than that's, you would a classic car. And that's what we're trying to do, but. Okay, I just wanted to be sure you were <clears throat> satisfied with that 10 year. Mr. Warren. Sometimes I don't even like my own ideas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, I like Mr. McKay's idea of a, of a conditional Conditional use with with a three year time limit for you know to to renew. There in the staff report, there were six items that if we were to approve it, there were six conditions. Have you read those uh, in this report? And are you okay with those? I think we can't do one of these wavy arm guys. Was that the thing? And or something like I don't I, we and we don't do that. I, I think I think as I read through it, we plan to rotate. They are AOK already has an existing LED sign and they plan to just put us on the rotation. We might have a sign up on the side of the building. Um, we're certainly not gonna do rental trailers, motorcycles, again, none of that. Um, we, we will, whatever improvements we're gonna do, they will be done before we start selling cars. By the way, we can't even sell cars there until we get a supplemental license from the state of Kansas, which we can only get once it's approved zoning-wise, and they won't let us do anything. Um, I mean, un until we have all this done. As far as, yeah, we, we plan to not disrupt the traffic flow for AOK -okay because obviously that doesn't benefit them. Um, off street parking spaces shall be provided. Um, we won't display anything off street or, uh, oh, off street parking. Well, I guess I don't know on that according to, I assume that's a number of parking spaces for off street for that business. Is that, is that what number four is? Right. I mean, they've got a jillion parking spots behind, so I'm assuming we'd be, I mean, that that would be okay. Um, of course, we'll always comply with all the laws. So yeah, I, I, all of those look good. I'll make an and, attempt at a, at a motion unless, unless you're ready to go ahead. Make a motion. I make a motion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, Mr. it's okay. Okay. Mr. Mr. Johnson, Joe Johnson down here has had his hand up, so that's fine. Go ahead. He said go, oh, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was going to second his motion if he made it, but I wanted, <laughs> I wanted two restrictions on it. And I was going to I was going to say I'd like to have the motion include 16 an average of 16 cars and an average of 5 years in age. Agree to that, but I'll make a motion. Try a motion. That we do a conditional use for three years. Uh, we got and used the six items that the staff put in there if it's approved. I don't want any, I don't think we can limit, tell a guy how he can do with his business about whether it's a 10 year old car or a five year old car or whatever it might be. Uh, so that, that, that'll be my, be my motion. Cause he's second. Hey, I have a motion by Mr. McKay, a second by Mr. Warren, a hand up by Mr. Richardson. Would John, would you include in that not to be fenced? Well, yeah, it, that wasn't one of the requirements. Would you would you include in your motion that the lot would not be fenced? Well, if you, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Not he doesn't fenced. want a fence. No, he doesn't want a fence. I understand. No, but, no, that's fine. Okay. I just, that? that wasn't one of the requirements, so I didn't throw it in the response. 
All right, and I'm going to open up the floor for discussion. What that does, it gives the South Central people a chance to work on the thing. It doesn't really give you a vacant. That used to be a Safeway store, that pawn shop was, years and years ago when I was a kid, and that's been a long time ago. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> it was before cars. I mean, I just, <laughs> that's true, probably. I want to make a quick comment, and then I'll get to the rest of the comments. Um, you know, for the past seven or eight years, I have sat on several different planning committees. And what's really bothersome to me is that we sat and we developed these plans for the community or for areas of the community. And we decide what's most desirable for those communities and how are those areas of the community and how do we clean those up? And this is the South Central Committee is one of those that I'm, the South Central Neighborhood uh, Planning Committee is one of those that I'm sitting on. And I'm a South Sider, so I drive down Broadway day in and day out. I drive down Broadway and I look at how we've used Broadway and I'm continue to be very concerned that if we continue to go against and allow what's least desirable, we will never be able to change the south area of Wichita. And so I just want to, I'm, I'm going to express that here publicly today because I can, I can, I do continue to be concerned. And for that reason, I will not be able to support this motion. So let's get to the rest of the statements. Mr. Joe Johnson. I guess I would agree with you, except I think in this case, it's prevailing that since there's already a functional business there that allows cars to park there, I have no problem with it. I think parking there as opposed to having cars there 24 seven is, is different. If, it was a, if there's a quick trip for. 24-7, it'd be the same thing. Mr. Bill Johnson. Well, basically, I mean, there's been lots of meetings, lots of committees, lots of things. A lot of that never comes to pass. The same thing with the South neighborhood. That may be passed. It may not. It may be five years before you see it. It's not in effect today. The other thing is, I think the three years ideal. I've been by his other facility, and uh, it's up or in type of used cars and the most of them that i see on south broadway probably don't fall into that category so i think the three years is ideal and 20 cars is fine and let him run his business mr mckay I, I, something just popped in my head he said he had to get approval from the state so the three years is from his approval of the state that he'll have to, yeah, it's a, a state license to. Okay, so, say, so that's what, not from the day or when the city, but when he gets his license from the state. The, the state requires that the city sign off on the license and indicate that the address that's being licensed permits the use. It's got to come back in three years anyhow, and then we'll know more about what's happened to the South City. Mr. Blick. I have some problems with this just because we, we had, same similar situation with the quit trip down on south south broadway i understand the situation with the quit trip where there can be nothing else that's there you have probably about five plus car lots that have been abandoned that are up for lease there is a neighborhood plan that is in place since 2005 that says you cannot have this the dab board voted unanimously that they do not want this. The community came and spoke today. They do not want this. But then we go and we reverse it. Just because this person knows somebody that wants to put a car lot on, on an empty lot. I think that we're doing injustice for the neighbor association and injustice for the neighborhood plan. And I am against this. Other, other discussion? Mr. Daly. If there's so many car lots that are available to be something, they could be something else. And if they can't attract these other businesses that the South End wants, why should this one? So, I, you know, there's other spaces for, for what they desire and they're not taking up the challenge either. So I can support the motion. Florence. This is unique in the sense that there is already an established building there. And if this model don't work, it'll go back to what it is today. And it won't be an abandoned car lot. It's just be part of that existing building. And that is the uh, reason why I have Tennessee maybe to support it. Mr. Foster. 
I just want to echo that. You know, this this is unique. Um, if you could go back in time relative to all those others that are existing, this would be an ideal model that you, you'd want to consider for a, a used car lot. Um, second thing is, I frankly think if a grander plan comes along for that particular node, this use can go away very simply with some paperwork and driving some vehicles away. So I, the way it's presented, I, I support the motion. Mr. Duell. I think the issue is, uh, is that area of Wichita going to be better off or worse off if this motion were approved? And I support the motion because I think there's a net gain there. Other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. Yep. So motion carries 12-2. All right, moving on. Agenda item number six, CUP 2018, 0052 City CUP Amendment to Tallgrass, East Commercial Community Unit Plan. Dave, there you go. Madam are. Chairman, thank you very much. Dave Year out again with staff. This is a request to modify um, the conditions relative to um, primarily the the one parcel, which is mostly parcel for um, B. It also includes now part of um, parcel for H. Um, the primary change is to allow the use for a self storage um, facility. Uh, this is unique in that it will be a completely enclosed. This is not the type of uh, self-storage we've seen in many other places around the community. Uh, the modification will uh, address both the use and also the, the overall size and of uh, the building. The height originally was proposed to be 45 feet. That has now been reduced down according to the plan at 34, 11, 34 feet 11 inches, which puts it that far underneath the 35 foot height limit that's already in place. Uh, the uh, property is zoned LC. This is a part of the tall, grease, tall grass east commercial CUP. Uh, for those that are familiar, this is the vacant land north of the old Granite City that used to be on the east side at 21st and Webb. Uh, this shows the future land use of the area. Uh, residential and employment mix. Uh, this is the proposed site plan that's been provided by the applicant that shows the size of the building, the location. Uh, there are uh, people here representing the, the company that will explain exactly how they work. Uh, essentially, these are, uh, it's a drive-through facility that they, they drive through uh, the building and all the activity occurs inside of the building. There is no outdoor activity associated with the business uh, and anybody that's uh, leasing space within the storage complex. Uh, this shows the existing CUP. You can see parcel 4B and they are now taking part of parcel 4F. And so the recommendation and approval would be to allow the use, uh, modify the CUP drawing to accommodate both the new lot lines and the uh, details regarding the plan. This is a picture looking northwest at the site. Um, this is the private drive that comes in off of Webb, north of the Granite City facility, and I'm sitting back past the uh, um, island in, in the area. Looking back in northwest, you can see the wall along the north side of the building or the property that exists now. Um, this is looking east, and OptiLife has built a, uh, a building on further east. It's roughly sitting about this location. Um, this is looking south into the drive a parking lot, and, and you can see the old Granite City building that's still there. Not old, the old place where Granite City was. Uh, looking north along Webb uh, at the entrance and looking south in those are the pictures that we've got. Um, 
I guess, yeah, there's the application. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. All right, we'll start with Mr. Florence. Is this facility be similar to the one that we uh, permitted on the west side? Yes. Okay. Mr. Green. Nope. I was, he Mr. just took my, he was reading my notes. Oh, he was? Okay. <laughs> Mr. McKay. <laughs> okay. Mr. Richardson. Hey, would you uh, detail for us the changes they're asking for uh, in the community unit plan? I think one of them is the, is the warehouse use. Is that correct? The warehouse use, the uh, changes will also address for the, the new parcel, uh, the percentage of lot coverage, the gross floor area that's uh, proposed, as well as the maximum area of the building footprint on the property. Well, it's uh, primarily the use and the, the size of the building and the, and the size of the building. Uh, did you did you speak to the parking that's needed here? Did you talk about that? Well, I didn't really speak to it because this is such an unusual situation. It really doesn't generate much parking. Right. They're showing, and and you can see on the the site plan that they've provided. Um, there are parking stalls that will be on the west side of the building. Uh, within the CUP and the plat, there's a building setback off of Webb for 70 feet. There's also a, a setback off the north property line, and their plan now complies with all those requirements. And I know the applicant will probably address and, and in their presentation talk about uh, what they presented at the DAB meeting, which was that uh, in, in addition to the uh, facade views that you'll see on the structure, they're also improving and enhancing the amount of landscaping along the north side of the property. Well, I remember on the one out west, we made an exception to the parking requirements. Is that right? Are we doing that here as we well? Might, no, I, this does not trigger any exception to par parking requirements that I'm aware of. Okay. And we, we discussed the parking, but we did require the code number code required number we, of we did out west, west. Yeah. okay all right okay so and we're so we're not a, we're not asking for an exception here on the parking requirements yeah. okay all right thanks johnson area in, in front to the west is that re, uh, drainage retainage or is that uh, pad sites that open area in in this in this area Uh, that's just going to be a uh, parking lot and then just grass area. There's, there's no ability to put other buildings on there. Is there no, oh, Joe. Joe, can you speak in your microphone? Is there please? no drainage requirement here? As far as there will be a drainage plan that will have to be complied with. Most of the drainage will come back and, and move back towards some drainage structures that are existing further to the east. Other questions from Mr. Duell? I'm also uh, going to uh, abstain from this because uh, we live very near that area and uh, Slauson develops the land around our house and manages our homeowners association, so I'm going to abstain. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Dave? All right, thank you, Dave. Oh, ma'am, you'll, you, you'll have to wait. Uh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, can I ask the agent or applicant to please step forward and uh, state your name and address, and you will have 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. on the, click on this. Great. Thank you so much. Hmm. Hello. I'm Brody Glenn with Centennial American Properties. Uh, my address is 935 South Main Street, Greenville, South Carolina. Um, thank you again for your time to let us come in front of you. Uh, as, as Dave mentioned, we're working on a very similar uh, facility at 21st and Webb, and we, I'll give you just kind of idea of the process that we've been through. At Mays, there was no residence. We actually couldn't even find a board that we could meet with. Um, at Webb, we did, and so we went and met with the board uh, of the Tallgrass Association. We met with them just before Christmas got their recommendations and we had the board um, was in support. We came to the DAB meeting and there was a number of neighbors that came to that meeting that had concerns about heights and other things and I'll go through them. 
And, and so we, we stopped our process, as we said when we were here before you all the first time, we really believe in the process and the process works. And so we stepped our process to sit down and work with the neighbors to figure out how do we make this project better? And, and the process works. And I think at the end of the day, we have a project that's better and I'll go through it. And I want to ask one question real quick, Dave, are we asking for a conditional use or is it, it's not a CUP amendment. CUP amendment. So it's not in the CUP use now. now. Gotcha. Um, so this is a building very similar to Mays. Uh, we're still using the, the Nietzsche high material. Uh, we are using a more gray material so that we can match the OptiLife. Well, a couple of things that you'll notice on this elevation, one of the big concerns we heard from the neighbors was the height of the building. And the buildings, it was 45 feet tall or so in the rear. Uh, obviously the residences were right there. Um, and so we developed actually for this site a custom proto and what we did was we lowered the building to under 35 feet, 34.11, uh, to the deck. And we did that by, on most of our stores, the first floor is 16 feet. And that allows us to have 13.5 or 13.6 clear for trucks to pull through the building. Um, so here, what we did was we eliminated or from 16 feet to 12 feet on the first floor. And then we eliminated the stores directly above the pull through. So it's basically two stories there. And that allowed us to bring the height of the building down to that 35 foot maximum that, that the code requires. Um, the other thing that we did is, is, is the residents did not want people looking down or have the ability to look down into their neighborhood. And so we took off uh, all the windows on the north side um, and also restricted the lighting there to, to, ha to make sure we wouldn't have any bleed off for, for one, but also, you know, we don't need a lot of lighting, um, just enough lighting at night for security. So the top there is the rear um, or the east side, um, and then the bottom is the north side. You can see all the windows and lights are taken off of that. So, this is the most up-to-date site plan. Then, Dave, the plan you had up there is a little different. We'll make sure we coordinate that. Um, as you can see, there is a pull-through just like there is a maze. Through our conversations with the neighbors, uh, that pull-through will be towards the south. Once again, trying to eliminate as much lighting as we can. 98%, 99% of the loading will be done internally. The garage doors, there'll be a garage door on each side of the pull-through. Those will close behind you, and so you'll be contained there. So from a noise standpoint, um, we should be a really good neighbor. Um, <clears throat> as far as parking goes, we've got one row of parking there. There's been some questions about you know, why are we not moving our building further up here. It really has to do with this access point. We feel like we need access there at the front of the store, um, and if we slide any further, it's going to hinder us having the ability to have that access point. Also, I don't know if I'm seeing, I don't know if y'all can see. Here, we move the dumpster as well to the south side to get that away from the neighbors. Um, trying to think some other things that we did. I'll go through landscaping in just a moment. Uh-oh, I got turned sideways. And I don't know how to turn this, and I won't try to while I'm up here, but you can see the view corridor there. Um, if you go from the south or down up, turn it shows you what the viewport is and I'll show you the landscaping that that is in reference that tree is in reference of so this is the landscaping so when you have uses like this and we deal with this in different developments all over the country quite honestly um, there's a lot of different ways to do it one which I think is needed is some kind of barrier luckily there is already a barrier there is an eight-foot wall that was um, built sometime before us uh, the other way is landscaping. Landscaping does a lot of things. It helps with the light, it helps with the noise, it also helps with the view corridors. And so once the neighbors came to us, um, that was the first thing we did is, is, is find a local landscape architect that could help us build a plan that would work and not just work in six or seven years. Last time you see developments and you get these trees that are you know two inch caliber. Um, and so we hired a local landscape architect and work through some renderings of what the development will look like within the first year. 
we actually took those to the city. We did two different renderings. Uh, we took those to the residents and actually let them pick which one they liked the best, which here it is. And, and this is the landscaping. This is what it will look like within a year, 18 months or so. Um, and so we're putting in heavy caliber trees. We're beefing up the landscape there. And then and these uh, trees are, will be like this year round. Um, even though the other plan that we had showed more evergreens, um, these, I didn't know that oaks, there was an oak tree that kept its, its leaves all year. Learned that on this deal, but so this, this oak tree does keep its leaves all year. Um, you can see the wall in the rear as well. And then we'll have landscaping underneath that wall, underneath the larger trees there, just shrubs and whatnot. Ah, this is the other plan. No, excuse me. This is the plan looking towards the north. So this looks, um, what I'm looking due north. This is looking, I call it northwest, northeast. So um, that is our proposal today. I understand, I, I want you all to know, I do understand the residents' concerns. Um, there are a number of uses that are allowed out here. You know, when, when you hear self storage, just as first time I came in front of y'all, you think about the, the guy that lives on site with the, with the dog and, and whatnot. This is totally different than anything that y'all have seen. Um, and while the building is tall, it's 35 feet, in, um, any building can be built there at 35 feet. And we really have tried to sit down with the property owners and the neighbors to work with them to make this as good a development as possible. As far as noise, there'll be very little noise, very little traffic. Um, we will not operate after 10 o'clock at night. It will be manned from 8.30 to 5.30. Um, so I, I just want y'all to know, and the neighbors, we. The process has worked in this case, and I think we've got a better development for all of us um, than we had 45 days ago. So, thank you for your time, and um, I'll be here for any questions. Or does anybody have any questions? Questions from the commission. All right, Mr. Glenn, thank you. Thank you all so much. Okay, is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak on this case? If you will step forward, state your name and address, you'll have three minutes. My name is Levi Hobart. Uh, my address is 2327 Vinegate. Um, this, will, this is my uh, residence right here. Um, so you have to excuse me here. I'm a, short of casting my ballot every two years. This is my first attempt at civic participation. So. Uh, I'll do the best I can. Um, the two main concerns that I have with the uh, with the storage unit, um, as it relates to uh, to our neighborhood, as it relates to our community, um, is the crime that is involved with storage units. Um, for me, that's not uh, something that's up for debate. Uh, there are peer reviewed, um, uh, researched, peer reviewed university studies that show storage units increase crime, and with an increased crime also decreases property value. And so I think that for me, uh, I could give you stories of, of coming from a single, uh, single parent household uh, and the struggles that I had to work uh, and, and deal with growing up and how hard I've had to work to get to uh, a place where I could afford a place not only for myself, uh, but for my little six-year-old daughter, uh, my little 12-year-old daughter, uh, and how important that is to us um, to be able to provide that type of lifestyle and make it better for my children. Um, so again, like I said, the, the crime uh, to me is, is, is non-disputable. Um, it's peer-reviewed research that shows storage units increase crime. Crime decreases um, property values. And so if I, when, I look, when, I, when I got here today, I looked through the, the staff report, and the two things that I have a concern with, I guess, uh, primarily are on page six and page seven. Uh, number three, it says the extent to which the removal of the restrictions will detrimentally affect nearby neighborhoods. The proposed self-storage warehouse is inconsistent with existing conditions in the area, uh, which we recommended condition mitigate impacts to the neighborhood. Uh, I disagree with that. Um, the one example that was given was the OptiLife, which is a community-based local health facility for local residents. This is a storage facility that can bring in any sort of uh, tenant, from anywhere, not only in Wichita. Um, I could give you anecdotal evidence of drug manufacturing that happens 
in storage units all the time. Those are the ones that have outdoor access, let alone ones that have completely enclosed access. So, um, so I would disagree with, with point three um, on the staff, uh, excuse me, on the staff report. Um, and then also relative to gain to public health and safety, approval of the request represents a gain to the public and that it contributes to the area's long-term ec economic opportunity and expands its tax base. Uh, I don't know that any business that would go in here um, that would be more detrimental to, uh, like I said, the crime and the property values, than not to mention have a detrimental impact on the other businesses uh, that will be then existing in the same area uh, of this location as well. So for those reasons, I, I couldn't object anymore to, to this type of, of structure going in. Um, there is also, you know, uh, yeah, sorry. Time is up. Yep. Um, questions, Mr. Joe Johnson. The uh, crime studies you referred to. Oh, yes, use your microphone, right. please. The crime studies you referred to, does that differentiate between the type of storage units? Uh, it does not. Thank you. Else was over, had questions over here. Ms. No, was there somebody would, else that had a question? Sorry, I would like to say, I, don't, I didn't specify that, so I don't know for sure that it does or does not, rather than say that it doesn't. Any other questions from the commission? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the audience that would like to speak on this case? Ma'am, if you'll state your name and address and you'll have three minutes. My name is Janie Kowawa. I live at 2355 North Stony Brook Court for the past 25 years. Um, I'd like to ask first, how many other people in the audience are here about this issue? Neighbors? Okay, we don't have as many. This is the fourth meeting I have been to about this issue. First two at the Edgemore Public Library. We averaged about eight to 10 people. We had another meeting at our area clubhouse attended by about 40 people. All of us were in opposition to this um, behemoth. I know that the outside edge is supposed to be 35 inches, uh, 35 feet, but the uh, look like above the windows was a lot higher. And I had heard someone say who had looked at a plan that there was a big point in the middle that would, was going to be higher besides the air conditioning ducts. So there will be other things higher. And even 35 feet, there are houses right at the behind that wall that have swimming pools that will now not have any afternoon sun now or for the children playing out there. We'll, I cannot believe that will not impact the resale of their houses in the future. And I do appreciate the concessions made for the height and the new windows and the other ones mentioned, but still we want to know why here? There is so much empty land for construction in commercial areas along Greenwich, not to mention along 21st Street from Webb to uh, to Greenwich, where this would seem to fit in much better than having this big giant wall for us to look at behind our houses. And I would like to ask, um, you have mentioned a similar building in Mays Road where there was no uh, community board to talk to. Uh, I would like to know, is the, uh, you said there were two buildings, is the other one also, does it also abut a residential area or is ours the first one rather than in this busy uh, business corridor? And uh, say so that it has lots of traffic along there. So, and I do appreciate that your business talked to the uh, Tall Grass East Homeowners Association board. Unfortunately, that board abdicated all responsibility to notify any of the people, the homeowners. We knew nothing about this until we got the letter like a week before the meeting at the uh, first meeting in February at the library. There were no signs up. One of our neighbors took uh, <coughs> 60 photographs around the area and there were no signs up that were supposed to be there for uh, 60 days, I am told. So it just seems like a lot of corners have been cut. There have been concessions made, but we still ask, these, it's going to be a over one and a half lot sizes, so it just does not match or blend in with the other buildings there. Granite City, I am told, is going to become uh, a medical facility, and that size-wise, you know, it matches in, and the business facade, too. So why can't it be something similar? Why this big, giant behemoth that will block our um, view? Your, Thank you. your, your time is up. Uh, can, you stay, <clears throat> can you stay at the podium just one minute and let me see if there's any questions from the commission, please? Questions from the commission? 
Okay. Oh, Mr. Hartman. When you moved in this property to the south, was it zoned commercial at that time? It had been empty for the 25 years I lived there until they started putting up the OptiLife and those things. But again, we had no idea what was there. I mean, there was the bank on the corner and then Granite City, and that was all for the past, what, 20 years? Something. And uh, do you know building when the frenzy now. was approved for that? It, it's been zoned at least that long, yeah. For the residential? I, I don't know. It, it's been zoned commercial since I've been here, and I moved here in 1990. But my question, could that be answered? The second facility, not the one in Mays, but you said there are two on the other side of town. It, does that also abut a residential area? He'll be able to answer that when he uh, does his rebuttal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Green, do you have a question? That's Wazer. Nope. The microphone's not working. <laughs> oh, his We're mic's not working. Mr. Joe Johnson, would you share your no, mic? No I, no, I didn't have a question. I was... That's what he was going to say. Respond I think. to okay. the applicant, letting him know that he would have rebuttal time. Okay. Is there anybody else from the audience that would like to speak on this case, yes. sir? If you'll step forward, state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes. Uh, my name's uh, my name's Ken LeBlanc, twenty three forty nine North Stony Brook Court, Wichita. My home does not lot does not directly abut the property, but I will have a kind of a side eye view. The people from Continental, South Carolina have been really gracious as far as coming out trying to concern our needs. I like their model, their program. However, I do not like the lot that it is situated in. If you, all of us are within the scope of looking at the YMCA out here, that is a type building that is going to be put right behind our neighborhood. Now that building is probably greater than 35 foot tall, but that is the behemoth that we're referencing here. I think that they have a good model, but it's, it just does not feel right within the scope of what they're trying to put it in. If they move a mile east, a mile west, up there by MC, over there north of uh, the Coke land at 21st and Webb, those are really spaces that uh, could be used for this type of facility. This building needs room to breathe. Now, one of the problems that we're having is the scope of the building. They say 35 foot. Nobody that I've talked to gets, can get a handle on 35 feet. And just the, the, the diameter, the rectangular, that the pad that the building's going to sit on, we're all just kind of miffed. So, if this goes forward, I would like them, the Continental people, put some type of pole up 35 feet, like a orange flag, and stake out just a perimeter of the building so we can see what we're dealing with uh, in the short term. I drove out there the other day. They've got concrete all torn up, so I don't know what they're doing out there. But So we're, we're the people that are impacted are struggling to kind of come to Cope's terms with the size of the building. Plus, uh, we were not, the people impacted were not informed. Our neighborhood was not informed by our homeowners associate on any level about the Continental building going up, the storage building. So, like I said, they've been really generous about coming out, trying to address our needs. Uh, the, a lot of the other things with the vegetation, the blocking of the building, but it just, if you go out there, it just does not feel. All you have to do is look at the YMCA and say, would I want that at the back side of my neighborhood? Thanks. Thanks, Kenny. Can you stay at the podium for a second? And let me, let me get these YMCA questions. What YMCA are you talking about? The one right across over here, or Central YMCA. Downtown. It's rectangular. Downtown y. Oh, okay. Uh, my question, um, oh, shoot, I forgot my question. What was it? Oh, what was the notification procedure on this? It was standard procedure. We, we use the same procedure all the time. It's based on the size of the lot. And, and in this case, since it's a CUP, it would be based on the uh, size of the uh, original notification area, which looking at that CUP was probably 500 feet. That, I don't know if Dave has the file with him to look, but yeah, I mean, it was the, the procedure was followed correctly. Here's where I live. Uh, let's see if I can get the mouse going. 
right over here. See, probably these people over here, I think there was like a 200 foot barrier boundary, maybe 500. So when you look at the scope of our neighborhood, you know, not the whole, the whole neighborhood is not affected by this. You're probably like 50, 60 people within that 500 feet. So our board kind of did us an injustice by not reaching out to us when they voted in favor and how many of them were living in the impacted zone itself, so. I had a follow-up question. Okay, Mr. Florence, do you have a question? Is this comparable to the, the buildings that have just been put up there in that area now? They're further away if they are. Well, you know you got that hospital there. So uh, OptiLife, yeah, the hospital, no, that's the lower profile. Probably the biggest building is the OptiLife building, which is probably another, well, it's another lot. It's like a lot and a half where it's been built. Like I'm saying, I think they have a great idea, a great business model to develop the, their product. I just don't think this is the right place for it. There's other places that they can buy lots within a mile in either direction that are readily available. Up by the AMC theaters, uh, which is less than a mile, there's a whole industrial park area up there. And over there, 21st and Greenwich Road in the southeast quadrant. Mr. Joe Johnson, do you have another question? I was just going to ask him, is the Opulite building at one lot away? It's it's down. Let's see. It's right in this lot, I think, right here. What's in the lot behind them? Between nothing. You? There's two ponds there, which the city needs to take care of that need to be aerated. There's it's like a mosquito pit, <laughs> so uh, that doesn't have anything to do with this. But this lot back here is vacant. The lot right in here. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. So just to clarify, your main objection here is to the size of the building? Uh, well, gentleman over here no, made I, some valid points. Yeah, but probably so. Your objection the size is of the, it's, not, it's, it's just not the, the scale use, is just huge. Not the use, but the size of the building. Well, I haven't really thought much about the, the use. Uh, there's a whole bunch of storage facilities all up where we live. I mean, I don't know. We, we, didn't really you don't really I don't really notice them there but they're not they're not this type of type of model and also the type of material they use on the outside one of the things that when we met last I didn't see you had some revision of your plans and I didn't see an aerial view it looked like there was some pitching going on and I didn't know how that would look Sir, you'll have to wait till rebuttal. To sorry. Sorry, that's that's okay. He, can, you know. Well, listen, everything is recorded, and, oh. and so if you're not at a speaker, okay. then, then right. we'll have a yeah. record of it. All right. Any other questions from the commission? Thank you, Kenny. I think I think people would feel more comfortable if they got a kind of got the scale of what we're really dealing with. You know, you. you you say, well, it's 300 feet long, and where you, you think of a football field, a lot of people can't imagine 35 foot tall or 45 feet or 170 feet. This is, this is something that we're going to have to live with, and I don't know if we get a more, more comfortable they make us feel, the better off we're going to be. Hey, and they've done, Kenny, a, they've done a good Kenny, job. I, need, I have to get on to the next there. presenter from the audience. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the audience that would like to speak on this case? Okay, seeing none, I will bring it back to the uh, applicant agent for rebuttal. And you will have two minutes. Oh. I'll go through these quickly, try to so we can cover all the points, and I appreciate the compliments we have tried to work, and hopefully you all have seen that. Um, on the confusion on the, at the beginning, we reached out to the board directly, not because we were required to. Uh, it's just the way we like to do things, and so that's why not everybody got notices. That's how we do it in most markets is figure out who's in the board, and we, we thought that information would get out. We knew it would in the public notice process, but that's where the confusion there, the process we did perfectly 
It's just we did one extra step. Um, the OptiLife building is about 35 feet tall, and it is, I don't know the exact size of that building, but the floor plate is a little bit smaller than ours, but not very much um, to give you an idea of, of the buildings that are around there. Um, as far as, so directly behind the OptiLife is not ponds, it's actually a, a pad there. The ponds are more to the northeast, and so that parcel could become something there um, right behind OptiLife. As far as the use definition goes, um, we have some language that's limited access, climate control, self-storage, um, so that if something happened, nobody can come and do outside storage. I can see why the residents wouldn't want that, and we're happy, happy to limit that as part of our use. Um, crime, on, on crime, it, I, we will not draw any crime. I, I'll tell you that, I don't know, I can't document it and give you studies. I'll tell you that our building is completely contained. Uh, there is no outside access to storage there, so everything is done internally. Uh, we have security cameras both inside and outside. Um, we will not draw a crime. Uh, it's just not the business plan that we have. Extra space storage also will be operating this one. Um, does it get through here? As far in the last one, so I heard somewhere that we had cut some corners. I don't believe we've cut corners. We've tried to really be above board. We try to do that everywhere we go. Um, we just feel that's the, the way you do business. So. Mr. Glenn, you're, you're out of time. Um, questions from the commission. Mr. Foster. Just um, I've got a staff question and a question related to your landscape plan. Um, one of the selections there, the shingle oak, is probably one of the slowest growing oaks you can get. So you might want to further your discussion on your tree selection. Um, the uh, other issue is you're going to, over time, it's going to develop a very broad crown. So again, you might want to look at that carefully relative to its impact on the neighbors and the shading and so forth. There's other trees a little bit more vertical in character I think might be better. Um, my second question is a staff question. Scott, what would be the, the zoning setback on this, uh, on the, the north property line? I think the north property line would be like 20 feet, but there is a restriction on the plat that it had to be 40 feet. That's what I wanted to double check. So the applicant here, I think if I read their drawing right, I think they're in the 45 to 46 foot range as a yes. setback? Yes. Okay. The building will be further away from the north wall than what they're required to by the plat. And other uses, regardless whether it's this use or another, it can go to this 35-foot height, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Florence, then I'll get Mr. Blick. Just one point of clarification. Wasn't the one out west adjacent to some residential uh, yes, I, and I was I was going to address that the the one at Thirteenth and Mays is uh, in the uh, Brant property CUP. Uh, it was adjacent to a CUP to the south that had a lot of residential uses, <coughs> as well as residential uses to the west. I think what the intention, what Mr. Lynn mm -hmm. was trying to say, was there was no organized board for them to contact when that project started. It's not that they didn't have residential neighbors; they did. It's just they didn't have a, an organized board to contact ahead of, ahead of time. I, I can clarify. I, I provided them the contact we have for that board, and it was no good. <laughs> Osmar, you have a question? Uh, I just had a question. Did you say it was staffed at Mr. certain Richardson. hours? Yeah. So it'll be manned from 8.30 to 5.30, um, and access is 6.37 to 10.00. Um, so that's and, and once you. again extra space which is a national operator there actually is one here uh, will we'll be operating all of our stores and so they will be branded extra space very good thank you Mr. Richardson I have a question for Dave uh, Dave is multifamily an, al an allowed use in this CUP no I don't think so thank you I think it's all commercial um, 
from what I seen and heard, it sounds like the applicants do due diligence with the neighborhood and trying to work with them. Um, based off the zoning and being inside and the growth that's happened in the area, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve per staff's recommendations. Second. Hey, I have a motion by Mr. Blick, a second by Mrs. Miles. Discussion. Any discussion? No? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries 12, and we have 12, 0, and 2 abstentions. All right, moving on to agenda item number seven, case number ZON 2019 -00007. And looks like we have Philip up to present. Uh, yes, good afternoon again. Philip Ziebenbergen, Associate Planner, Planning Staff. Uh, we have a zone request here to change the zoning classification of a portion of a property that's currently zoned SF5. Um, the applicant is requesting a TF3 zoning to allow the construction of duplexes on a property that's located uh, along South Web Road, about a quarter mile north of East Pawnee, as you can see here. Uh, according to the site plan that the applicant submitted, uh, you can see here within the pink outline zone is the portion of the property they're looking to zone TF3. Uh, their plan is to develop 29 lots with duplexes, which would uh, equate to about 58 dwelling units. Um, though it is not a part of this, and I believe the agent is here and he can clarify, within the SF5 zoning, I believe these lots that are around the outside would most likely be developed as single-family homes. Um, around the area is primarily single-family residential. Let me get back to my zoning map here. Um, there is some TF3 zoning around. There are duplexes here to the south. Uh, the Maple Shade subdivision up here with some patio homes and to the west are single family residential and single family residential to the east. Uh, this is a Cedric County uh, maintenance location uh, to the south of the property. And on the property itself, there is an existing uh, church uh, here, which the church actually owns this property and they're looking to be the ones to develop it as well. I've got some pictures from around the site. It is currently vacant as you can see. Um, this is looking east. Uh, there's actually a good tree buffer uh, pretty much all around the site. This is looking to the north. This is that maple shade subdivision. Uh, this is looking to the south, uh, kind of towards the uh, Cedric County maintenance facility. To the uh, slightly east would be where those duplexes are, but there's a berm and you really can't see them from the site. Uh, and this is looking to the west. This is the existing church building. Uh, Web Road is right here, and you can see the single family homes across the way. Uh, Web Road is a fully improved arterial road. All municipal, municipal services are nearby, though they would have to be extended uh, to serve this lot. And uh, this location is outside the established central area. However, it is a good example of infill development. Uh, with that, uh, staff is recommending approval of this case, and I can stand for any questions. Okay, hey, questions from the commission. Mr. Daly. What will be the access route to this piece of property? Uh, good Web. question. Here on the site plan, you can see they have their access road coming off of South Web Road. It'd be just north of the church property. Uh, you would have this single road here, and then the access road to the duplexes would be down here in the cul-de-sac. The road would continue into a cul-de-sac here on the uh, east side of the property for the other lots that may be developed. Other questions from the commission? Okay, thank you, Philip. If agent or applicant can please step forward, state your name and address, and you know the gig. You'll have 10 minutes. Good afternoon. Will Clevenger with Garver here on behalf of the applicant. Um, first off, I just would like to say that we think this is a great location for blending in with the neighborhood, being that this uh, requested zone change area would be uh, adjacent to the county building a county yard, I should say, to the south, and then also mostly next to the existing two-family residential to the south. And then by doing this site plan the way we have, that, that allows for single-family uh, development around the north and east sides. That way they abut next to the existing single-family area. 
I do understand that there's probably been some concern from some of the neighbors about drainage and about uh, some of the utility infrastructure, and that is something that we'll definitely want to accommodate when we get to the platting phase, but uh, not right now at the zone change. We're in agreement with staff comments, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any hey, questions from the commission? Looks like we have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak on this case? Yeah. If you'll step forward to the podium, state your name and address. You'll have three minutes. My name is Lauren Martindale. I live at uh, 2022 South Webb Road, which is in the Maple Shade uh, area. Uh, Maple Shade is a, uh, uh, a community of about 66 of 66 homes, single family residences. And uh, our concern is stormwater uh, runoff. Uh, currently, stormwater is pretty much retained by this vacant piece of property. And we feel that uh, when the uh, community is developed over there with houses, uh, streets, uh, driveways, patty, uh, slabs and that sort of thing, that there's going to be a, a lot of stormwater runoff. Uh, they, their area is higher than ours. We are just to the north of uh, where this area right here. And uh, this area over here is, is higher than, than our community. So water is, is going to be, uh, stormwater is going to be directed this direction and then towards Webb Road. I notice there's a couple of ponds up here, but they're also at the high end of this uh, property. Uh, so we would like to be assured that the, uh, the developer has a, a good hydrolog hydrologist who's, who's developed the plan for the, for the stormwater runoff and that the city uh, or the county get involved in making sure that that works and that the uh, construction of those uh, of that stormwater runoff is uh, controlled. That's any questions? I'll take questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hartman. Yes. Uh, are you okay with the the duplex zoning that they're, uh, they're asking uh, for? No. Uh, well, yeah. We're as long as that. No, we're mostly mostly concerned with the stormwater and the. And the today we're just re, we're, we're just looking at the zoning. We're not looking at the the hydrology of the site. That'll come with the plat. Okay. Okay. Other questions from the commission, Mr. McKay? I have a question. I got a comment, sir. You realize that when they plat this property, they'll have to have an approved drainage plan that'll take care of probably what you're talking about. I mean, they're just not going to willy-dilly let it go do it. They will have a, an approved drainage plan by the city. By the city. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that would satisfy our needs. Any other questions from the commission? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the audience that would like to speak Here. on this case? If you'll step forward to the podium, state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes. I need one of those buttons, those easy buttons on. My name is uh, Il Sik Hong, go by Ike. Uh, I'm a church member of uh, that church over there. Uh, we moved there two summer ago. Uh, as uh, other gentlemen just uh, mentioned, I don't know how to use these uh, things. Uh, Is it, uh, no, is it this? Yeah, okay, that's okay. The, can, can, can you show me the contour? Okay, that's good. Uh, this is a church building, and the south of the church is the parking lot and the entrance right here. As you see, all this contour from the, uh, this area here is a drain to the church to the web road. And I have a big problem right here with the water. Every time when it rain, we have a big gully right here. Uh, I really like to hear or see the what is your drainage plan is because see where this go. Just, just disappears. Oh, okay. 
all this backyard will be drained right into the, our church lot. I really concerned that. And then, uh, what, what, oops. what is your plan to screen the, between the, our church lot to your backyard? I, that's my main concern. Questions from the commission. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else from the audience that would like to speak on this case? Okay, agent and applicant, if you would like to step forward. And of course you have two minutes rebuttal. Again, Will Clevenger with Garver here on behalf of the applicant. Um, as you can see on the east side of the property, we know for a fact that we're going to have to have drainage detention at these two low points. There is a possibility of needing to have another drainage detention over on the west end. We won't know that until we get to the point of surveying the property for platting, um, but we definitely cannot increase the drainage from what's happening today versus what gets developed. So we will have to make sure that we capture that access runoff. And uh, I'd be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Foster. So I'm trying to figure out on the zoning, is this, um, what's, the, what's the church zoned as? I believe it is also SF5. Okay, so there would be no buffering requirement then between the two uses, is that correct? Actually, were the church to be built second, the church would have to screen from residential use. So go in this direction, there's not a buffering <laughs> requirement. That's correct. Oh, okay. Other questions? Okay. Thank you. I will bring it back to the commission for action, and Mr. McKay has his finger up. I can make a motion to approve subject staff comments. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. McKay and a second by Mr. Klossmeyer. Any discussion? Mr. Foster. I've asked this before, but what is the mechanism so that the folks that have brought up the drainage issue can be make sure and participate in the plat? No, so the they, notification for a plat is a sign posted on the property prior to the hearing. If they wanted to make sure they were contacted, who should they contact at staff? Um, just to make sure they're in the loop when the plat comes in. We can make a note in the file to, if they've signed in on the sheet to include, to notify them of the plat. I just want to make sure the folks in the audience make sure they should get signed up there if you do want to see notification about the plat. Okay, thank you. Good thought, Dave. Any other questions from the commission? Any other discussion from the commission? I guess I should have said. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 13 0. All right, moving on to agenda item number eight. Looks like Mary's going to present to us on the Northeast Heights Neighborhood Comprehensive Plan Amendment. Right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mary Hunt, planning staff. Um, back in the fall of 2018, the residents of the Northeast Heights Neighborhood Association began inviting staff to their monthly meetings. Uh, their concern uh, centered on the possible intrusion of commercial development on their neighborhood. And so subsequently, after several meetings, we put together a um, uh, series of five policies that helped address this and they basically center on that we prefer uh, we, we prefer residential development to stay as it is that we um, would discourage stripped out commercial development in their neighborhood and then we put together on policy number three a series of of uh, suggested development standards. They're not, they're not required, of course, but um, 
that we, we believe that they would help address their concerns regarding this, and including things to do with buffering and lighting and, and what monument signs should look like and the like. So we met with the DAB this, earlier this week. They unanimously uh, approved this, as had the Neighborhood Association group from uh, some months ago, and it's before you today. Any questions for Mary from the commission? Mr. Blick. Mary, I know that we had, and it's kind of hard to see in this map, mm -hmm. I know we had a property that was, they were trying to get a commercial property, I think is at 21st and Oliver, is that correct? That's correct. So this would kind of help the neighborhood protect that going to a commercial or something like that, is that basically it? Well, it, it established maybe some standards that should it go that way, um, that it could be ha be more compatible with the residential neighborhoods right by it. But of course, it applies to the entire one mile, one square mile area, not just that corner. It's just that that intersection, the, the properties located right there, were the um, where we had rezoning applications in the past. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate you it. Other questions from the commission, Mr. Foster. This is a bookkeeping matter. Um, how will this amendment be kept track of so that we'll... How is what? How will it be kept track of over time so to make sure it goes along with the investments plan? The investment? I'm sorry, the investment The community plan? investments plan. How do we know? Oh, how's oh, it going to oh. attach itself to it? I guess I'm not, I'm not understanding your... Uh, the uh, the amendment that you adopt is uh, adopted as what we call an element of the plan, uh, and if you look at the overall plan, there's an uh, appendix in there that lists the, I don't know, 15 or so other plans that are elements of that plan, and, it, and that's how you keep track of it. And then you have to go find that other document and review it. Questions? What type of action are you looking for? Kind of public hearing. Yeah, we, we have to go to the public for comment. Any other questions from um, um, John, Mr. Daly? <laughs> John's good enough. Uh, <laughs> is this plan saying there there will not be commercial development at the corner there, the, the uh, north west corner? of 21st and Oliver? It does not say that. It says that retaining residential development is encouraged and that commercial development in a strip, uh, like a strip mall type development is discouraged. It doesn't mean you can't do one or the other. This is still private property. Anyone can come in and ask to rezone their property uh, anytime. That, that's just the property rights that they hold. So if it's just one office, it isn't a strip mall then? That's true. Okay. Okay, any other questions for Mary from the, from the commission? If not, is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak on this case? Step forward, state your name and address. You'll have three minutes. My name is uh, Lonnie Barnes. I stay at 2924 North Terrace here in Wichita, Kansas. And so, guys, I, I know we're here to decide policy and what we're going to say in here. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see the colors pretty much. You see the blue and the, and the not so blue? So what this is across here is Oliver. This down here is Central. This is 21st. This is WSU setting right here from Oliver down to Right here is the bypass. This is 17th Street on the other side of Wichita State, 13th Street down here to the bypass, 9th Street down to the bypass. All this blue is coded in here as uh, opportunity zones for an outside investors to come and invest into this property area to improvement. Part of that's the encouragement of your revitalization and all of this to encourage all this other area. This primary area in here that's not, this is your hillside, Oliver, hillside, Grove, uh, and then coming down to the bypass over the ninth. Now, this sets all of this, 
much more of a sense into your revitalization and infill projects in here, but a little encouragement for this area. And when I go to this direction, 29th Street over here is here, and this is 21st Street down to the bypass. This is a section that we're talking about on that corner, up to that one corner. Now, the important part about this corner is this, is that in every development you've planned, you've had from 95 to and revisit in 2005, 10, and, two, and 2013, there's no incentives in the core of these areas, of 17th, 13th, uh, going across Grove, all those have been going around and everything else and adjacent to it. Now, guys, I, <clears throat> you're not going to get revitalization started in one of these without starting it out on the perimeters. And this has been our catalyst, Wichita State University, for a lot of that. And when you start stifling down what can come along this area, and this is that mile goes over, that's almost to, your, almost to uh, 29th Street coming back down the hillside. There's not much in there. This big portion right here is graveyard. You got some spots along here. Uh, 21st Street coming down here stops about there. And then you got more graveyard going this way. And then down here, you got open plats. So the thing is, guys, when you start putting too many restrictions in here, when we say the restrictions are things that we would like to see in there and the things we don't want to see, uh, this restriction says you can't have uh, grocery stores, you can't have pharmacies, you can't have those creature features that we all have to go and travel but people come but you're going to add a lot of more residential with apartments you've approved over here some other places along there so i just say with the policy be careful of what you say we can and can't have that we all want that's going to help vitalize and bring those future features to it okay thank you thank you mr barnes Woo. questions from the commission no you have a question for staff Go ahead. Which staff? Mary. Mary. Is any part of this square mile in the opportunity zone? Well, I can't answer that, but I bet it is. <laughs> um, I, get it. I don't know. Would it, it's, I think probably ought to be looked at as something we consider when we do these neighborhood plans. Uh, sure. I don't know that anybody knows what effect these opportunity zones are going to have yet. Uh, they're getting a lot of press uh, around the country and articles about what might happen for redevelopment. I think he makes a good point. Uh, I don't know, it probably changes the neighborhood's mind, but it might be well to, and, and I'm not sure when we hear any of these cases that perhaps part of the staff background report ought to include information about whether or not these are in opportunity zones. Uh, maybe that doesn't change anything, but it would be good to know that. I think it might bring more pressure for redevelopment, uh, perhaps. And, you know, maybe even at some point a little education session for us on opportunity zones and what has to go on there in order to, uh, in order to make those work. Uh, you know, it has to do with deferred tax benefits, but I don't know what else it comes along with that. So. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there anybody else from the audience that would like to speak on this case? Okay. If you'll step forward, state your name and address. And again, you'll have three minutes. Hello, everybody. I know you're uh, tired and want to get on with this. My name is Steve Falke. I'm at Three Crestview Lakes Estates. Uh, friends with Lonnie Barnes, uh, very active in the neighborhood. I can uh, definitely understand his concerns for business development or just development in general that brings activity. Uh, but we can see all of that going on with WSU. And the, this whole idea of this policy was brought up not necessarily as a, a matter of protection as much as it is a matter of discussion. Um, we fully recognize that there's there's properties all within this mile and for some reason people seem to be fixated on that corner at 21st and Oliver probably just because that's the corner that's had the most activity in the in the past few years but there's several lots along hillside between 21st and 29th that have been vacated or are sitting vacant and need to be developed as well and there's also several pockets of infill that need to happen within this square mile 
that we wanted to, uh, the desire here with Mary's help, and she's been extremely helpful, uh, the desire here was to basically um, set some uh, or reinforce some existing uh, neighborhood plan ideas and concepts that were already in place so that when this happens and when WSU continues to develop as they hopefully will, uh, that we can have some constructive discussion and like I said, you know, identify should there be some opportunity zones in, in this particular mile, which there, I don't think there are at the moment. But uh, mm -hmm. anyway, uh, I'll stand for any questions. Questions from the commission? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the audience that would like to speak on this case? She's shaking her head no. All right, I will bring it back to the commission for action. Mr. Warren. I'll start the discussion off here because I think this is bad policy. Um, I agree with Mr. Barnes here. Uh, even though this doesn't preclude a zone change, once you set it down in a policy, it becomes the pattern that people looked at and says, well, this was decided. We therefore need to, we need to follow this, this discussion. I can live with policy number three, number four, and number five in terms of safety provisions and, and, and that lessen the impact between a commercial development and a residential neighborhood. I have no problem with, with coming up with buffer zones lighting issues, doing anything that I can to lessen the impact that a commercial property, you know, is going to have on the existing neighborhoods. But this is, that, that intersection is a commercial intersection. It has become a commercial intersection. It's, on, it's already on three sides uh, of that intersection are commercial. And to single out those three lots as something that should remain residential makes no sense to me. That, that, is, that is a poor use of, of that property and there are ways to let that go into a commercial development and still buffer that that business from the, the neighborhoods that are in there so if we were to ad adopt this policy i would want to eliminate policy number one and, and number two from this policy or in in absence of that eliminate the three lots um, at the corner of, of uh, oliver and 21st street that that are in there that are checkered right now. If you look at the at the map, you can see a, a checkered area. Eliminate those lots from from this particular policy, and then allow allow the policy to go through the rest of it. So, if it goes as it is, I will I will vote against the the recommendation. I would move. Would, I guess I would like for those of you that if understand where I'm coming from and, and are in agreement, because I'm sure that there are those that are disagreeing with me. Uh, would you prefer to? Um, Eliminate policy one and two, or would you prefer to eliminate the lots, uh, those three lots at the corner of 21st and Oliver from? I, I would say eliminate one and two. Okay. I would I would move to approve the policy, mine, striking policy number one and number two on page two of the presentation that we have before us. I second that. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Warren. I have a second by Mr. Klossmeyer. Discussion. Mr. Foster. You know, that corner, if you if you go southeast of there, it's a church. And then if you go south of there, it transi transitions to cemetery uses. And so I'm a little hard-pressed. To me, the, the intensity is the northeast corner only at this point. With It's up in the air what's going to happen at the southwest corner. So I'm, I'm not fully on board that it's all commercial. Mr. Joe Johnson. Mr. Warren, can you explain your uh, alternate solution that you were talking about? What what would eliminating those three lots do? Just leave it all open? That would that would eliminate these policies from applying to those, which means that we would not be saying that we recommend that they remain residential. I don't. Oh, so I don't, if we had a zoning request that came up, we'd just look at it. We would just look at it. Yeah, we wouldn't change the zoning. We just it would, we would it would look at this as we would look any other lot anywhere else in the city. It would, the, the rules that apply to Hillside and 21st or Woodlawn and 21st would apply to this. I like that suggestion better, but. I would be willing to change my uh, 
motion. Change my motion to, to eliminate those lots from, from that so that it would be treated as all others. I, like I said, either one of those, but I just think that we're, that this is a, an undue imposition on, on the property owner of this, of that particular corner. Mr. Klossmeyer, do you agree with I, that? I'd agree with that. Okay. Yeah, Mr. I would, I would withdraw my motion. Just amend it. Okay, I'll amend my motion to, uh, instead of eliminating policies one and two from the overall area, but eliminate the three uh, designated checkered lots at the corner of 21st and Oliver from the policy. I agree. You agree with that, Mr. Klossmeyer? Okay, I have uh, Mr. Daly. Now, I was going to say I agreed with the first, <laughs> the first one, eliminating one and two. So Mr. looks Richardson. like it's already been changed. <laughs> Well, I'm sympathetic to what he's saying, but we're kind of off here in the sort of in the weeds. We just talked about a comprehensive plan on South Broadway, and uh, it speaks to a lot of areas. I'm sure that we've already approved here at this body, and we're we're getting into looking at specific lots. And actually, this plan speaks to those lots and simply says it it's it's encouraged that they be developed as one. Uh, rather than separately uh, and this whole thing talks about encouraging various things it doesn't eliminate anything this is this is strictly advisory and I and I think if we I think we set a precedent here that says we're going to talk about individual lots when we look at neighborhood plans here and I you know for that reason I wouldn't support this I think it's it's Often an area that doesn't make sense to me at this level of detail, uh, because this is not a document that is imperative about what zoning can and can't not uh, be done. Those requests are always open. We just heard one on South Broadway that is the same issue uh, here, where we had probably approved it as recommending against car lots. Uh, I assume that plan, Mary, came through this board as well. Uh, and so we have all kinds of things in these plans that are recommendations that come back and get looked at in detail should those, uh, should those develop. And should they develop, I'm sure that you would bring to us what the desires of the neighborhood are with regards to those, to those lots, and we could consider them at that time. Mr. Foster. Just follow up on that, you know, the, the conditional use case we did have, the result of having that plan in place and the information brought to us is it facilitated the discussion. And I think it, it helped craft the final decision into a better decision. So I would not support the motion. Any other discussion? Okay, Mr. Bill Johnson. I want to get on my soapbox a little bit. Um, developing anything, we get to make the decisions in here, whether they're right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, we had a case about a, a storage building, which storage building, that's a wide term. <laughs> uh, you had an applicant that went in front of the neighborhood the, redesign the facility and it still give a opportunity for neighbors to come in and even pick it apart. So I think the, the less things we think we're going to iron out, we're better off to leave alone and decide in here. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. No. Aye. Okay, can I, let, let me see a show of hands for those in favor. Okay, and then those opposed. Okay, motion fails uh, with a vote of 6-6. Six, six. As such, I'd make a motion to approve subject to the staff comments. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Richardson, a sec Mr. second by Mr. Hartman. Other discussion? There's parliamentary fun here. <laughs> I 
I go back to my original. I go back to my original motion and, and make a substitute motion to eliminate policy one and policy two from the overall policy. Second. All right. I have a motion. Then I have a substitute motion uh, by Mr. Warren with a second by Mr. Daly. Other discussion. Seeing none. All in favor of the substitute motion, say aye or raise your hand. Yeah, that'd be good. Substitute. The substitute. Got it. That's right. Post same sign. Okay, so motion carries eight to four. Okay, and with that, we are adjourned.